Hi, hi, welcome, welcome. Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome. So glad to have everyone here. I am going to get started right now. Um, uh, my name is Ali. I work with the Washington Youth Garden. And today we are going on a virtual field trip. Where? At the Washington Youth Garden. Virtually, of course. And where is that? Where is the Youth Garden? Does anyone know? It is actually located in Northeast DC in that map right there. And it's in the United States National Arboretum. Has anyone ever been to the National Arboretum before? This is a map of the Arboretum. And in Latin, arbor means tree, arboretum means place. Why do you think it has that name? Why do you think it has the name Arboretum? Hmm. You can use the chat if you would like to share, um, but I am going to share with you. It's called the Arboretum because it's basically a museum for trees. And it is really, really big. It's 446 acres of beautiful green space of trees and open fields and meadows as well. Um, so, really hope you can join us sometime in the future at the Washington Youth Garden, which is this um, kind of pinkish purple circle. And today we are going to not be in the actual youth garden, but we're going to be where that green circle is. And where that green circle is, is where our greenhouse is. And that's a special place where we take care of seeds and seedlings before they go into our garden. So that's a map of where we are right now. And what kinds of things can we do at the garden? So many kinds of things. You can touch a worm, you can pick a carrot and other kinds of vegetables, you can eat a leaf. It is really fun. Um, and so, so these are some questions for you. Um, but we are going to head right into the greenhouse and I am going to introduce you to farmer Amelia and farmer Xavier and they are in our greenhouse right now so I will pass it over to them. Hello. Hi everybody. I'm Amelia. Xavier is on the camera. And welcome to the greenhouse. It's a really special place. We have lots of things growing right now. And we'll talk more about what's growing in here and how they're growing in here. But first, I have a question for you. Where does a lettuce come from? A head of lettuce. Well, lettuce is a vegetable and it's a plant. So how does a plant start? When it's really tiny baby, it starts as a seed. So this is what a lettuce seed looks like. And feel free to look at the screen Allie will be sharing with you. And today we're gonna talk about seeds and different seeds and how they become plants, which turn into the vegetables that we eat at our dinner table. So first of all, this is a lettuce seed. What do you notice about the lettuce seed? It's really, really small, right? Really tiny. Maybe what, what about the color? The colors, maybe like a little white, a little brownish. And it's got a funky shape. It's kind of skinny and pointy. So that makes me wonder, how do other vegetable seeds look like? I have a few here that we're gonna dive into today. 
So if you can take a look at seed number one, and Ali will be sharing it as well on the screen. What does seed one look like, number one? Seed number one, to me, has a different shape than the lettuce seed. It's a little more round, but not like a circle. And it's also a different color. It's darker. It's a more like a, a dark brown or a black seed. What about seed number two? Seed number two is also really, really small, but it has different colors, different shades of colors. What colors do you see? What about the shape compared to the other ones, this, this lettuce seed and seed number one? And finally, we have seed number three. Whoa, seed number three looks totally different. It's a lot bigger. The colors are different. I see kind of like a greenish color, maybe a white creamy color. And what about the texture? Texture is how you feel. And to me, they're kind of like wrinkly. What do you think? Well, today we're gonna look through all of our different seeds here, seed number one, number two, and number three, and we're going to guess what they are and reveal them at the end of this lesson, okay? So put your thinking caps on. And I have another question for you. What do we need to provide these seeds in order for them to sprout? Any guesses? Well, seeds are kind of like us, and we definitely need something to drink, right? Whew, I'm thirsty already. Whew. Oh, thanks, Nadia. That's right, plants need water, specifically the seeds, in order to germinate or to sprout. So water is really, really important. Second thing that we need, oh, so it's a little chilly in here, Xavier. What do you think? Yeah, it is I think I need to put my jacket on. Oh, but now it's too hot. Oh. Seedlings need temperature control. And temperature control means some seeds require warmer temperature than others. And those other ones need cooler temperatures. What do you think? I actually like warmer temperatures. What do you use, Xavier? Uh, cooler temperature. See, so we're, we're different seeds. We need different things. So, like I said, seeds need water and temperature in order to sprout. But there are some additional things that they need in order to keep growing into seedlings or into mature plants, adult plants. What do you think those things are? Well, I can tell you that it's definitely really sunny in here. I feel like I need to put my sunglasses on. Whew. Plants need light, sunlight. Who likes the sunshine? I do. Sunlight is really important once the seedlings have sprouted because they need this light to photosynthesize. Can you say photosynthesize with me? Photosynthesize. That's how they turn light into the energy they need to create food for themselves. So that's really, really important. Another thing is they need to breathe. Can you take a breath with me? <sighs> Plants need air. Just like we do, right? Fun fact, plants breathe in carbon.
carbon dioxide and we breathe in oxygen, but then we breathe out carbon dioxide and plants breathe out oxygen. So we go well together. We're like a great pair. We work well together and create different types of air that we both need. Another thing that plants need, hmm, I'm getting hungry. Are you getting hungry, Zaria? Yeah, very hungry. <laughs> I could eat something right now, just like plants. Plants need food. Yum, yum, yum. What is your favorite food? Well, plants take food through their root systems in the ground. So what does that mean? That means their food has to be in the soil, in the dirt, right? So I have here some really lovely plant food. Can you see that? This is compost. Can you say compost with me? Compost. 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 Lots of organic matter. That means lots of nutrients for plants. And I'm touching it, it feels crumbly and moist. And also, what do you notice about the color? It's really dark. You can tell when soil is really dark, it has a lot of nutrients in it. Yum, 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 yum. Just kidding, I don't eat. I don't eat soil, uh, but plants do. And then the last thing is a space, a space to grow in or a home, an area that they can grow in and have protection or when they're actually outside and in the ground, physical space, right? Because if plants are too close together growing, maybe they're fighting for the nutrients that they're trying to get from the ground. So you have to make sure that plants have their space and protection if they're not ready to go outside yet. Like right now, we have all of these plants that are not quite ready to go in the ground. Okay, so let's go back to our first question. We went to seed number one, seed number two, and seed number three. Would you like to see what those seeds look like as baby plants, as seedlings? Yes. Maybe that will help you guess what vegetable they turn into. Okay. So let's see. Once these seeds have enough light, air, food, nutrients, all of that good stuff, water, they turn into these seedlings. So this is seed number one, turned into a baby plant. Can you guess what this is? I'm just touching it because it's really soft. It kind of feels like grass. What do you think? Are you ready for the big reveal? All right. Seed number one is, drum roll please. Onion. Do you like onions? Yes, they Me love too. it. I eat onions almost in everything that I cook. How do you use onions, Xavier? I use in every single thing actually too. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I like them sauteed in a pan um raw in a like a salsa right that's really good and what else mm -hmm. how do you like onions? In a sandwich Ooh, in a sandwich as a topping mm -hmm. really yummy okay what about seed number two seed number two kind of looks like this when it turns into a baby plant you can see that it has nice green round leaves. What do you notice about it? 
it looks totally different than the plant that seed number one turns into. I noticed a lot of the water droplets too. Okay, seed number two turns into, drum roll please. likes broccoli. I know some, some people don't like broccoli, but I love broccoli. Mm, I love broccoli too. I love broccoli when it's roasted. That, that way it gets like little crispy bits on it. Um, I also like broccoli with my mac and cheese. Is that, is that weird? I like it. How about you, Xavier? I like broccoli. <laughs> oh, you like it raw, like in a salad? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, broccoli is delicious. And finally, we have number three, seed number three. Once seed number three has water, light, nutrients, it turns into this really cool seedling. Wow, totally different. This seedling has kind of like butterfly shape or like wings for their leaves. Some of them kind of look like hearts and they have these cool little like curly antennas at the top. They use this to climb. So what could this be? What vegetable could this be? I'll give you a hint. It looks very similar when we eat it to what the seed looks like. So let's take a guess. Drum roll, please. <laughs> seed number three is peas. How do you enjoy peas? Raw. Raw, raw peas in a salad. What about a can of peas that you just heat up really quick and eat? That's really good too when you're crushed for time. Uh, peas, I like peas with my pasta or my rice. You mix it in with the rice, yum, that's really good. And all of these veggies are super nutritious. So anyways, I hope you had fun on this trip, even though it was virtual. We got to see how seeds are so different and what they need to grow into baby plants that will eventually turn into the food that we eat at our dinner tables. And how are we on time? I can give you a quick bonus question if you're ready for it. I have two different seeds here and feel free because they're kind of falling off my paper here. Feel free to look on the screen too that Allie will show. But these seeds, I'll give you a hint, are flower seeds and they are edible too. They have edible parts. So Allie, can you show seed, bonus seed number one? What does it turn into? Drum roll, please. Drum roll. And sunflower. A sunflower. I can't wait to have sunflowers in the garden. How about you, Xavier? Yeah, I'm very excited. And bonus seed number two, take a look at your screen because this one is falling off my page. This one is hard, I'll tell you, because the seeds are really, really different. They're long and skinny. What flower could this be? Drum roll, please. <laughs> A marigold. This is a beautiful yellow, orangey, fluffy flower. And it's so beautiful. And did you know that you can eat it? The petals are edible and they sprinkle on and add some color to your dish. Anyways, thanks for stopping by. I hope you loved seeing our greenhouse and exploring seeds with us today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.
Okay, awesome. If anybody has any questions in the chat, feel free to share them. Thank you so much, Farmer Amelia, Farmer Xavier. We had some lovely um, folks in the chat saying, Sunflower, they got that one. They got it right. And one person even got peas right. They called it out. So good job, everyone, for following along and using those thinking caps to, um, to guess what those seeds were. Hopefully you get to plant some yourself this spring. Everyone. Farmer Amelia, one of the students in the, in the chat asked, what is different about planting in the winter and compared to planting during the regular growing season? What is different? Mm -hmm. Well, as how do you do it? Know, sorry? How do you do it? That's a great question. Well, if you're around here in the DC area or the Maryland or the Virginia area, we do get cooler temperatures. And some plants, just like uh, our plants that we plant in the spring, they actually do well in the cooler temperatures. And so if we know we're gonna plant something in the winter, we'll put them in the ground at the end of fall season and they will grow throughout the winter. Maybe sometimes they'll need some protection. So they'll put a cover on them. Uh, but because they prefer those cooler weathers, you don't really have to water them as much. And especially like during that time, the water stays into the ground pretty well. And then you have vegetables in the winter time or in early spring. And then other times, if you have a space like this, a greenhouse where you can temperature control, that way you can set the temperature that the plants need or require and grow through the winter, even though it's colder outside. Did I forget anything, Xavier? Very clear. Awesome. Well, thank you. That was a great question. Did we have any other questions? Yeah, another question is, how do you plant flowers in the winter? And I wonder for this one, maybe there might be, I know, uh, Farmer Amelia, you planted a lot of flower seeds. Maybe you could show us what some of those flower seeds look like now and, and when you planted them. Definitely. Well, Xavier is going to take you over here. Uh, we have all of these flower seedlings here growing. Cosmos and calendula. We also have herbs. And kind of the same thing, we want to have these flowers in the springtime. And so we started it. When did we start it, Xavier? In February, like end of February, we filled these trays with soil and sowed our seeds. And we've just been giving it lots of water, nutrients, and it has sunshine and the right temperature in here. So they're able to grow inside. And then once they get bigger, so these are kind of getting a little bit bigger. These are marigolds, like you saw with the bonus seed number two. And once they get bigger and bigger, we will transplant them or move them into bigger containers until they're ready to go outside. And then we'll have beautiful flowers in the garden and you can come visit and see them. So that'll be really exciting. And when do you think you'll be able to move those plants outside? And is there any step you have to do in between when they're in the greenhouse and when you say put them in your garden? Very, very good question. So we don't wanna shock the plants because it's very different, right? From being inside to outside. And maybe they might not like that and it might hurt them. So we do a process called hardening off, which means we take them outside for a couple of hours and bring them back. And then the next day we take them back out, maybe for a little longer, and we kind of wean them or prepare them 
for the outside temperature. It's like an adjustment phase. And so once they're outside for long enough, maybe like a week or two, you know, plants are different. They, they require different things. Then they'll be ready to go into the ground. That was an awesome question. So when do you think, let's say your marigolds there, when do you think that they will be ready to go into the ground in the garden? Oh, okay, great question. Xavier, do you want to answer? Yeah, most of these plants are very sensitive to frost. So we got to wait until our last frost pass, which is in DC area is about, let's say April 15. But sometimes we get a little bit of colder season. So we got to wait until make sure outside is warm because these marigolds like to be in a warm place. So we don't want to put before, otherwise if it's a cold night, it can die. So we got to wait for some plants, we got to wait until the temperature outside is warm. So we are pretty sure that little babies will grow uh, very healthy. You guys, we have a lot of great questions in the in the chat box. One that came was asking about the the peas. So if the marigolds, they take a long time to go grow from the seeds until you get them into the garden. What about the peas? When would those need to grow in? When do the peas need to go in? Yes, to get them into the garden. Well, good question. I feel like this week is the start of when you can direct plant the peas into the ground. That means you can take the seed and put plant them outside directly and they will grow. Or like we like you saw, we had peas starting in the greenhouse so they could kind of get a head start. And so the advantage of that is now we have the little baby seedlings ready to go, but we still have to harden them off, take them outside, prep them a little bit, and then we'll put them in the ground. So peas are ready to go now. They like the cool weather. And how do you decide if you want to grow something in the greenhouse first or if you want to put it directly into the garden? Wow, that is a great question. I would say one of the first things you have to decide is what you want to plant and when would you like to harvest or when would you like to have the plants to enjoy. So for example, with the peas, uh, usually you, like I said, you, you direct sow them, but when you look at a seed package, it will have what you call uh, days to harvest or days to maturity. And you can kind of do some math if you make a plan. Well, I would like my peas in April or May, then what is the what is the days to maturity for peas that year? It's about it's, like 40, 45 days. It's like 40, 45 days. So that's like a month and a half. So if you want peas in May, you have to make sure you get your peas in the ground by uh, uh, mid-March, right? Or, or late mm -hmm. March. So there's a little bit of math involved and planning. Uh, but if that doesn't bother you, you can uh, you can plant and see what happens. The only thing you do have to worry about is that that frost date that Xavier was talking about, because then you could kill your plant and that would be sad. All right, you guys, thank you so much, uh, Farmer Amelia. Farmer Amelia and Farmer Xavier, last question for you guys. Why did you decide that you wanted to work with plants? And what type of schooling or what type of work did you need to have so that you could grow plants at the youth garden? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I love plants and I love food and I love the connection of humans and plants and the earth and what they provide for us. Uh, I actually didn't go to school for, for plants or for agriculture or for farming. I went to school for engineering and I learned a lot of different skills that have also helped me in this job, but I knew that working with plants would make me happy and that I could share that joy with other people too. What about you, Xavier? 
I grew up in a farm, um, in a different farm of vegetables, though it's a completely different, but it's the same idea. I grew up in a coffee farm uh, around like, around coffee. So you can see me now. Hello. <laughs> so I grew up in a coffee farm and I fell in love since I was a child to see the process, how the plants become adults. And then you can uh, get from the earth, like the nutrients, the life, uh, all the love that nature gives to you. Uh, as you see in this big house, it's full of greenness. It's gonna be prison food for somebody. Somebody will be hungry. And this little one's gonna provide the food for them. Uh, but also we don't have just this one. And then maybe in the next week we start planting a different seedling. It's not, this is like the first, the first like uh, the first like seedlings we have it. For summertime is another different story because those plants need like need like heat, but also food. So everything you see here is gonna be food. And in fact, some are already kind of food because the herbs we have, if you can just cut a little bit and make a nice tea, and maybe in summer we can have some like lemons from this plant, for example, or ginger from the other plant, or sugar cane from the other plants. So we are surrounded by the beauty of the nature given us to us. So it's very important for me, and I fell in love since I was a child to the nature. Thank you guys so much. There's another couple of questions in, in the chat, so we'll get to those in a second, but I am sure some other people have to hop off. So I just wanted to, to thank Farmer Amelia and thank you, Farmer Xavier, for, for really giving us a great tour of the greenhouse and thinking about what our seeds need to be able to grow in the soil. Um, so thank you, everybody, and have a great day.